Cornerstone people, thank you for tuning in with us here at the Cornerstone Borneo. We trust you're going to have such a great service with us. And so if you're ready to praise the Lord, why don't you get up on your feet and let's roll. Hey, good morning church. How are you guys doing this morning? Woo! Are you guys excited to be in the house of the Lord together? Yeah. Come on, let's praise His name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, we're going to celebrate freedom this morning. Is Jesus set us free? We're going to shout it out, okay? We sing, You came to set the captives free. Hey! You came to bring us liberty. My sin and my rejection met your blood and my acceptance. Now I'm alive to bring you praise. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Every chain.
for freedom Father we come into your presence this morning Lord we just want to set our hearts before you God the freedom to worship you Lord Hallelujah now we can worship you without any sense of condemnation our sins are washed away Oh, 
Father, this morning as we come into your presence, Lord, we just want to set our eyes on you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, how we love you because you first love us, God. So, Father, we give you our heart this morning. Yes, Lord, we set right now, Father, this place, wherever we're standing right now, as an altar of worship. It's an altar of praise unto you, God. Lord, I pray, let sweet incense arise to you as we sing songs of love, songs of thanksgiving, oh God, I pray that you fill us up, Lord. You fill us up, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, church, just take a few moments. Just give thanks unto the Lord. Kirianda Baranda of a Shankaro, so to the Buranda Mayanda Kirianda Baranda of a Shanda Baranda of Ayala Kalamaranda of a Shondo of the Boyade. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. Oh, how we love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Kirianda Baranda of Ayala. We love you, Holy Spirit. Hear this dwelling place. Come and feel. Come and feel this temple. Come and feel this temple with your spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask for more of you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit, in this place. Let you be enthroned, oh God, over our lives, over our families, Lord. Even as we sing songs of how much we love you, we know, Father, Lord, we can never, never, never exceed how much you love us, God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We come with a heart of gratitude this morning. We extend our hearts to you, Lord, just to say how much we love you because you first love us and how you made a way for us, Holy Spirit. So, Father, this morning, we just want to say thank you, God. We thank you for the, your grace and mercy every morning that is new. And Lord, we come, Lord, I pray that, that you just prepare our hearts, oh God, so that it be a good soil for your word, for your godly seasons about to be poured out through your servant, oh Lord. I pray for your anointing, we ask for your anointing, God. So thank you, Father. And Lord, I pray for spirit of revelation and understanding to be upon each and every one of us as we listen to your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Have your way this morning. Have your way in our lives, Lord. We invite your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Hello and welcome to the live stream of Cornerstone Borneo. We are so happy to have you with us today. This is Jack. And this is Elvina. Thank you for tuning in everyone. If this is your first time with us today, we want to give you a big shout out. We know that you're going to be blessed and ministered to by today's service. Hey Jack, with you being so formal, right? People could have mistaken this for a news broadcast. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, but as opposed to news broadcast around the world, we bring good news. What sort of good news? Well, in Romans, uh, it says that beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And the same was emphasized by Pastor in Warfare series. Mm. So today, bringing us the word... is none other than our very own beloved pastor, Pastor Sabrina. Over to you, Pastor. Good morning, church. We're going to dive right into the Word this morning, and I've entitled my message, Gather Around the Table. I hope you're gathering around the table and being part of the service right now, or around the living room, or around a cafe of some sorts. But you know, 2020 has been what a year it's been. 2020 has been such a year where the Lord has stripped down our old mindsets and a lot of false perception of what church is, what faith is. And some of us, we had our faith a little bit wavered in the beginning of the year, especially during the lockdown. And many of us started manifesting our little foxes in our lives that were eating us up on the inside. And we thought we had dealt with these things in our lives. 
And the Lord has rebuilt, the Lord has restored many other perceptions and revelations that He is currently doing in this new era, in this time and in this season. Let me say this, that although we are in a pandemic, the gospel has not changed. Although we're in the middle of a crisis, the mandate of the kingdom of God, the assignment of God, have not wavered. It has not been shaken and it has not changed. Amen. Someone once said this, if where you are is affecting who you are, then you've got a problem. But if who you are is affecting where you are, then you've got a purpose. And as Christians and as believers, we're not called to be affected by what's happening around us and, and on the outside of us. Instead, we are called, we have been assigned on a mandate of the kingdom of God. We are people on a mission that who we are start to affect what is happening around us. That's called purpose. That's called mission. Amen. And that's who we're called to be. I want to bring us back to Acts chapter 2 because I absolutely believe this is the original template of the church. This is how church was designed to look like, was designed to be from the beginning of time. And so Acts chapter 2, and I want to read from verse 42 and then we'll move ahead with verses 46 and 47. Now it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. So continuing daily, everybody say daily. Continuing daily with one accord in unity in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They, are, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Wow! We see the concept of the temple and the table in this passage of Scripture. You have the apostles and the disciples meeting daily at the temple and also going from house to house, breaking bread around tables. And I want to break this down for us because this is so powerful. See, the church has been so templified that everything we do is steered around the temple or the church building, the church services. We have such a temple mindset that we've missed the power of the table. The Lord wants us to find a balance between the temple, which is the congregation, and the table, which is community. See, when you go to an optician, right, hope vision, for example, and you know you've got a lazy eye or you know you've got this, you've got a, a what do you, a astigmatism, you know, and you go to ying, and hope vision, and you say, Ying, I think there's something wrong with my vision. It's a bit blurry. Can you give my eye some test? So Ying brings you into her, her little studio, look alike uh, testing room, and she makes you sit down on the chair. And what does she do? She covers your good eye to test your bad eye. Right? Have you gone through those, you know, testing of eye? They cover your, the optician covers your good eye, your strong eye, so that your bad eye or your lazy eye can be tested and strengthened. And this is the year 2020. And from the beginning of this year, you have heard so many people say that God wants to sharpen our vision. He wants to give us a 2020 vision. And rightfully so. And that's why in this year, what God is doing essentially is that He has been covering our strength so that He can strengthen our weaknesses. God has been covering our good eye. What we've, what we've done so well and we've known how to do, you know, He's covered the temple fight mentality so that now our weakness is being exposed. That lack of unity in the community amongst believers. It's being exposed. How our homes are breaking down in that sense of community. It's being exposed. And He exposes that not because He's here to shame us, but because He wants to strengthen our weakness. Amen. 
The gospel is a holistic gospel. The church is called to be a holistic church. God is not just concerned about your spiritual faith as much as He's also concerned about your mental health, your emotional well-being, your physical body. And, and, and it's a whole gospel. And that's what the church has been called to embody, to personify wholeness, holistic, strong marriages, not divorce, not breaking down, mar- not broken down marriages, strong families. We're called to exemplify and be a pattern for the world in all these areas. Come on, if you believe that, say amen. And so we, we have been very strong with our strong eye, which is the temple. Every Sunday morning, we have the church gathering and we can do it even with our eyes closed, right? We know what's going to come after. You know, we have the lights, we have the smoke machines, we have the whatever else we do in our church services. We can do it almost with our eyes closed. We know what's coming up next. And I feel that we are in a situation where the temple has been taken away. Our strength is now being covered so that God can strengthen our weakness, which is community around the tables. Gather around the table. And I think it's coming back to the reality of God's original template. God's original purpose and plan, which was always, always family. Family. We call Him our Father. The model prayer that Jesus taught us to pray was our Father in heaven. Not our Savior or our Lord, our Master, but our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. It was never an institution. From the beginning, it's always been about home. Home. The next revival is going to be family. The next revival is going, to, is going to begin in the homes. It is going to be a massive homecoming of fathers and mothers, of sons and of daughters. It is going to be a, a, a global homecoming. It's going to start in the homes. You watch, you, you, you watch and you see, you pray about it. Test the word in your hearts. It's going to start in the families. It's going to start in the homes. We have worked from the outside in for a long time now, church. And I want to speak a bit more prophetically this morning. We have worked from the outside in for far too long now. The church globally has tried to build high without going deep. We want to build a high superstructure, massive, spectacular, marvelous building to all people. We want, to, we, want to, we want to grow our church attendance and we want to grow high without going deep, the depth of our spirit, deep cries out to deep. But this year, everything is happening. It's the opposite. It's the opposite of that. God is dealing with us from the inside out. Our insecurities, our fears, our inner demons that we struggle with. And this year, the the grace of God has been upon us to deal with these things from the inside out. We've been given the grace to dig deeper in our depth before being propelled higher in our heights. Amen. And those of you who have been preparing yourselves, I'm telling you, Watch what's going to come next. I feel 2021 is going to be such a transitionary year. It's going to be a year of massive victories, but there can be no victories without first a battle. And we're going to win battles for the Lord, I'm telling you. Because what's the point of preaching to masses when your own family is breaking down? Your own children are backslidden. Your marriages are breaking down, falling apart. Your insecurities and your fears are eating you up on the inside. God is now dealing from the inside out so that whatever we get purified, whatever that we carry on the inside gets overflowed naturally out to be a blessing and to be an impact to others. And I believe we're going to see a convergence like never before as we step into next year, 2021. I believe we're going to see marriages, more marriages, Physically, of course, naturally, I I believe that. 
But I'm not talking about natural marriages. I know some of you are really desperate to get married, but life is more than just being married. Amen. Okay, but I'm talking about spiritual marriages that have been divorced, things in the church that have been divorced, that have been separated and segregated for a long time now. It's almost like you have to choose one or the other. And I believe that a convergence, a, a spiritual marriage is happening within the universal body of Christ, the church. For example, people say, are we a word church or are we a spirit church? Why do we have to choose one or the other? We are both. It's a marriage of the word and the spirit. People ask, are we, are we called to be a king in the marketplace or a priest in full-time ministry? And I say, why do we have to choose? Why can't we be both a king and a priest? It's a convergence and a marriage of all of us being called as kings and as priests. I believe we're going to see a marriage and a reconciliation of the old and the young. Why do we have to choose whether or not we want to be a young people's church or an old people's church? It's both. It's intergenerational. Or are we apostolic or more prophetic? It's both. The church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Are we discipleship or evangelism? Both. Are we about the gifts of the Spirit, all supernatural, all supernatural? Or are we about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, character building? Both. We need the gifts and also fruit. We need to, to grow in our character so that our supernatural giftings can be sustained. Are we the temple or the table? Are we the congregation or are we the community? It's both. It's both. And I know that there are several movements right now, if you follow the Christian scene, that people who have been so burned by church as a temple, by church as an institution, that now they are advocates of house churches. You know, and they, they are bitter and just all discouraged and beaten up because, you know, whether they, they weren't given a platform in, to serve in an institution or they, have, they were burned by leadership or pastors whatsoever, you know, and so they leave the church as an institution disillusioned and they start home churches and, you know, they disregard the temple of the Lord. It's not either or, it's both. Amen, Cornerstone, we need both. We need the temple and we also need the table. Come on, somebody. And so we are all called to host at the tables. We must move away, I tell you, from a pastor-centric, personality-driven model of a church. I cannot be and I don't want to be your crutch. Just because I don't meet you doesn't mean I'm not there and I don't love you. I can't be possibly meeting everybody on the grounds. You understand, you get my heart. The church cannot be a pastor-centric church. We have to move from the ministry to the saints. Because for far too long now, the church has been that. What can the pastor give to me? What can the pastor offer to me? The pastor didn't come and pray for me when I was sick. The pastor this, the pastor that. We've become so pastor driven. It's become such a ministry to the saints. It's almost like the burden is upon the pastors and the leaders of the church. No, we have to move from that mindset to a new wineskin to what God is doing now, which is the ministry of the saints. You have to offer what I don't have to offer and I can offer what you cannot offer. And when the body of Christ comes together in such a unity, the eyes become the eyes, the mouth becomes the mouth, the ears become the ears, the fingers become the fingers, even the nails have a part to play in the body of Christ. And when we all come together and move in our giftings of the Lord, in our anointings in the Lord, I tell you, we're going to be an unstoppable force of unity in the church, into the world. Come on. We've got to move, church. We've got to move. Hear my heart. It cannot be the ministry to the saints. It's got to be the ministry of the saints. It's a collective movement. Amen. Amen. I speak unity, unity, unity in our church. Come on. Come on. It has been so templefied, so templefied. That it's almost like we all have, we carry the spirit of entitlement. What, what can my pastor offer? What can my pastor do for me? What can, 
Come on, we got to move, man. We got to move from temple to table. We need both. We need both. But God is strengthening our weakness in this present moment with us being the family of Christ. Amen. Host the table. Gather around the tables. The pastor doesn't have to be there. You have your giftings and you have your anointings to preach the gospel, to share the good news of the message, to pray for the sick, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. This is the glo- this is the mission, the mandate that God has given, not just to those who are called to the full-time ministry, but every one of us who are called sons and daughters of God. And we're going to see a unity within the church in such a deep, real way that it will bring forth the greatest move of the Spirit of God that the world has ever seen. I believe that with all my heart. So let's dive into what I've got for you this morning on hosting tables and gathering around the tables of community. I'm excited. You see, when the disciples were breaking bread from house to house around the table, something remarkable happened. We read earlier on, the Lord added to them daily those who were saved. People got saved on a daily basis. Every day, there were good reports going around on, on, on WhatsApp. Oh, my, 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 my friend just got saved. Oh, my cousin just got saved. Oh, my relatives just got saved. My brothers and whoever else just got saved. On a daily basis. Wow! And that's essentially what can happen when we start hosting at tables, in our homes, at the cafes, in our gyms, in our offices, wherever God has placed us, you can host at the table. You don't necessarily have to have a physical table. That's not what I mean. What I mean is be a host to people. Invite people to your homes or to your gyms, to your marketplace. or Have a meal at a cafe and, and just host at a table. The gathering of community, of relationships, of friendships. And that's essentially what can potentially happen. What happens is that something supernatural is released and souls get saved on a daily basis. Can you imagine? Dream, dream together. Dream with me. Can you imagine your cell group, WhatsApp group chats? You know, going off daily and saying, you know, people are reporting like, oh my gosh, my my cousin who I've been praying for just got saved just because I treated her to a meal. Oh, my, my friend, my colleague just got saved because I stepped out and I prayed for him. What can, what can really happen when we learn to gather around tables and host? Because it's not fake Christianity. People are not just invited to the temple for a mass celebration service, but they're also seeing the vulnerability and the realness of your lives. Not in the temple, but around the table. Around the table, the stuff you talk about. The words that are coming out of your mouth the way you conduct yourself, people start seeing your life, the way you you discipline your children and you teach them. People watch these things. And so I want to encourage you to host at the table, especially during this festive season of Christmas. Amen. And then carry on from there. Carry on from there. Host around tables. Gather around tables. Now let's let's simplify Christianity. If I can simplify Christianity, it is twofold. Firstly, the great commandment, which is to love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the great commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you to observe and I'll be with you always. That's what Jesus said. A church is not a building. A church is not a place. It's not a physical place of a temple. The church is people, it's made up of people like you and I. We're called to love God and to love people. I grew up in Sunday school and one of the songs I've learned that have really just stayed in my heart is, is, that, is this, the concept of how church is not a building. It goes, it goes like that. I am the church and you are the church. We are a church together. All around the people, all around the world, we are a church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a place. A church is people like you and I. Many kinds of people, many kinds of faces, we are the church together. And rightfully so, we are the church together, amen. 
We make up the church, the temple and the table, the congregation and the community. Even Michael Jackson got it right when he wrote the song, Heal the World. You know, if I, if I could interpret his song, I'll sing it like that. Okay, this one uh, is, uh, don't call me heretical, okay? But, but it goes like that. I, I wrote it down in my notes. I'll sing it for you. We are the church. We are His people. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start preaching. There's a choice we're making. We're saving others' lives. It's true, we'll make a better day. Just you and me, the church. I feel very musical today. See, we're called to be fishes of men. We're not called to be keepers of the aquarium. It's not about keeping the fishes and the little fishies, a, a, a very special breed of fishies called Cardistonians into a church. No, we're called to go out there to make disciples of all nations, to be fishers of men. You see, Christ's first instruction to his followers was this, come and follow me and I'll make you fishes of men. That was the very first instruction he gave to his disciples. And the last instruction he gave to his people, his disciples, his followers, before he ascended up to heaven, he said, wait and tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And when the Holy Spirit of God has come upon you, then go and be my witnesses. Go and be my fishes of man. Go and testify in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and all to the other parts of the world. The first and the last instruction of Jesus has got everything to do with preaching the gospel. Hosting tables around communities, sharing the love of Christ, becoming lights unto the world, becoming witnesses unto the gospel. And I want to speak this morning very quickly on the love and the compassion of Christ. Because it was his love and it was his compassion that led him to the cross. And he calls us to walk the same road today. In fact, a missionary from Netherlands, he once said this, when Jesus wanted to save the world, he didn't use spiritual warfare. He used love. He used love. And Christians, I think, have a terrible habit of viewing people as projects. Hey, how many got saved, huh? How many got saved today? We view people as projects. Our desire to get people saved often supersedes our biblical mandate to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love people, to love our neighbor as ourselves. See, Jesus didn't eat with sinners after he voiced out his belief and his opinions to them. No. He ate. He drank with them. He embraced them. He loved them in their current state of being. They were won over through the sheer force of his love and his compassion for them. He hosted many tables. He said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house for dinner tonight. He sat down with people. He gathered people around table. He ate with sinners. With no tricks. No emotional games, no manipulation, no agenda. He wanted to be with them because he simply loved them. He loved them. He loved people. Psalm chapter 86 and verse 15, But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 to 24, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. Amen. Praise the Lord for this verse. Because His compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. And church, believers, people around the world in every culture respond to the same thing. They respond to love. They respond to love. L-O-V-E, love. And I want to look at Luke chapter 10 today from a story in the Bible, and I'll give you my points and we'll close. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. 
It's the story and the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let's look at this. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And this is when, if I were Jesus, I will say, Kiang Tio Ho, my gay Kiang. Jesus answered and said to this lawyer, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, please take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go, believers, and do likewise. I want to use this passage, this parable that Jesus told the lawyer, and I want to break it down for you, the compassion of Christ. You know, someone once gave me a word when I was really young, and he said to me, Sabrina, you are a very passionate young woman. Passion, that's what you have. And he said, but the Lord wants me to tell you that he wants to combine your passion and your zeal with his heart and his compassion. Because when passion is, is, is married together, is converged together with compassion. Talk about a new era marriage. He says when passion is combined with compassion, it releases the supernatural love and power of God that you've always desired in your ministry. And I remember just breaking down and I wept and I wept and I say, yes, God, I want your heart and I want your compassion to be converged with my zeal and my passion. Because passion pushes people out of the way to get to your goal, to get to the, the mission and the mandate and the assignment of God. But when passion is mixed with compassion, you stop for the wounded. You stop for the broken. You truly stop for the one. And so I'm going to break it down, the com, C-O-M, in your passion. When you host tables, when you gather around tables, exemplify compassion and love. Exemplify the C-O-M in your passion. Com in your passion, which is compassion. Firstly, let me say that compassion will see cost you. It will cost you. It cost this good Samaritan some money, his two denarii that he paid to the innkeeper to take care of this stranger. This man, he doesn't even know who was wounded. He even said, hey, you know what? Whatever he owes you, I'll come back and I'll repay you. It cost him his convenience. He was probably on his way to, to I don't know, to, 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 to do something. But yet he stopped. He inconvenienced himself. It cost him his convenience, his comfort. He picked this wounded man, probably beaten up, half dead, the Bible said. He probably had a lot of blood everywhere. Carry this man, put this man on his animal. It's like putting a wounded, bloodied man in your, a stranger in your car, in your vehicle and sending him to a hospital. Dirtying your car with his blood. It cost this good Samaritan something. And compassion, my friends, will cost you. When you exemplify the love and the compassion of Christ around tables, when we're all called to do that, we're all activated to do that, it will cost us. It will cost us convenience. It will cost us time. It may even cost you your reputation. Some of us get embarrassed talking about Jesus. Someone asks you, hey, you know, tell me about your faith. You know, we get a bit embarrassed. 
Well, what if they think I'm a holy cow? What if, I, what if they think I'm, I'm overtly zealous for God? What if I tell my family members my testimony and they think that, you know, what, oh, so extreme, so holy, so, you know, oh, so now you think you're holier than me? And we get embarrassed, right? Come on, let's be honest. It, it costs us. But compassion and real love will cost you something. O, C O M, the calm in your passion. Compassion, when you move in compassion, oh, it opens up the supernatural realm. It opens up the supernatural realm. And we see that in the life of Jesus. I'll give you a few examples. There are many examples in the Bible. Matthew 14, 14. When Jesus went out, He saw a great multitude and He was moved with compassion for them. And then He healed them. Healings happen because Jesus had compassion on them. Some of us, we want to move in all this healing and all this powerful gift things of the Holy Spirit. But then we're all empty gongs and clanging symbols because we have no real love and compassion for the people. We only want to show how powerful we are. Come on! The Bible calls you an empty gong and a clashing symbol. All you do is making noise. Clang, 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 clang. No substance. No character. And yet people are moved by real compassion. By real love. People can tell the ultimate motive of our hearts. Matthew chapter 15, verses 32 to 38. You read this, you can read the whole, the whole passage, but Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and they have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. You know the rest of the story. What does he do? He multiplies food. Multiplication of food, the supernatural was released because Jesus had compassion on the people. Compassion will open up the supernatural realm for you. As you're hosting tables and gathering around tables and there are non-believers non or pre-believers around the table and you start moving in love and in compassion, I tell you, it will open up the supernatural realm for you. Maybe God drops a word of knowledge in your heart for that person and you release a word of knowledge or a word of prophecy that, that deeply touched that person's heart. The person starts weeping and you say, hey, you know what, can I pray for you? You pray for that person. Something supernatural gets deposited into his heart. Wow! We're all called to gather around tables. We're all called to host tables. Come on. I remember the story of Heidi Baker and she shared a vision that she had and she said in this vision, the Lord Jesus appeared to her and in his arms were two robes. One was a beautiful bridal, clean white gown of a robe and on the other side of his arm was a dirty, torn, holes everywhere, brown robe of a servant. And the Lord Jesus appeared to Heidi Baker and he said, choose your robe. Which robe do you want? And Heidi shared and she said, you know, and when she saw that vision, something stirred up in her spirit and she cried out, the brown one, give me the brown one. And in that vision, the Lord Jesus looked at her with a delight upon his face and he said, you have chosen well, Heidi, because the brown one you shall wear and serve humanity, serve my people on this earth. And when you get married to me, and when you get reconciled to me in heaven, I shall present to you this white, glorious, white gown of a robe. And you shall wear that for eternity. Wow. No wonder she moves in such a supernatural ministry. In fact, someone once asked her, what is your strategy in, you know, in, in, in planting so many churches and having such a success in your, in your organization, in your ministry? And she replied, I will never forget she shared this. She said, well, I have no strategy. I just, I just stop for the one. I just stop for the broken. I love on people. I love ferociously and radically on people. And she said, oh, and go raise the dead. Because when you raise the dead, people come. Wow. When you raise the dead, people come. Number three. My last point is M. C-O-M. Compassion will move you into action. It moves you. Compassion is different from pity. 
Many of us move in pity. Ah, you're so pitiful, ah, this beggar. Ah, so pitiful, ah, my friend, you know, just got bankrupt. Ah, yeah, so pitiful, ah. Call and die, ah. Are you calling, ah, calling? Are you calling, ah, calling? Right? We, we have pity on people. But pity is not the same as compassion. Compassion propels you and it moves you into action. In fact, the Greek root word of the word compassion is the word splachnizomai. And the word splachnizomai means to be moved in your bowels. Do you know what your bowels are? You know when you eat something wrong and then you have like stirring inside. Grong, 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 grong. Where, where is the stirring? It's in your bowels. It propels you to the toilet. You can't have a stirring in your bowels and you know and know that you're gonna have a loud sigh, you know, flow river, flow session soon, and just sit down there and like, yeah, it's okay. No, it moves you into action. You have to run to the toilet because you are now being moved in your bowels. There is movement inside there. And that's what compassion means. Splatnizomai, to be moved in your bowels. You have such a compassion that it moves you into action. You have to do something about it. That's compassion. That's compassion. And you see in the story of the Samaritan, he's like Jesus because his compassion was more than pity. It was a driving force that compelled him to act on behalf of those wounded. Jesus saw the wounded and he rushed to their aid. Jesus, splachny zomai, compelled him to reach out and to meet specific needs. He healed, he taught, he provided food, he forgave. He did a lot of things because he was moved with compassion. He loved people and people were genuinely touched and moved by his actions. I'm coming to a close. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue only, but also in deed and in truth. Amen. And that's why I said that we have to move from a pastor-centric church of a model to the ministry of the saints. Not just the ministry to the saints, but the ministry of the saints. Because I can't be going to all of your houses and praying for you when you're sick and feeding you when you are hungry and, and, and counseling you when you are broken. I, I, one person, Sabrina Lowe, cannot do that. Neither can Pastor Rachel. And that's where the entire body of Christ comes together. Together around tables and to host tables. That's where the power of community comes in play. That's why we have cell groups. That's the power of cell groups. I, one person, am not God. I cannot meet everyone's needs. But your needs can be met within your cell communities. And when you have true love and compassion for one another in your cell, smaller groups and communities, and non-believers start coming and joining your communities, I tell you, they will be genuinely moved and touched by your actions. By your love for one another, for God, and by your compassion. We're all called together around tables and host on tables. Amen. Let's move to the ministry of the saints. I need you and you need me. We need one another in the body of Christ. And so I want to close by moving forward into 2021 because we're coming to the end of the year. When, uh, today is the 20th of December. We are about one and a half weeks to the new year. Amen. Come on. What a year it's been, 2020. I've loved this year. This year has done me more good than bad. Truly, a lot of things have been exposed and dealt with and the Lord has, 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 has come through triumphantly in my life and I'm sure in many of your lives as well. We've seen amazing miracles and testimonies come forth from this yeah, from 2020 this year, it's not a wasted year truly. And as we move into 2021, this is what we're going to do. All right, at least for the first quarter of the year. 
from January to April 2021. In fact, it's going to start from Christmas service this year on the 25th of December, and then we will flow right into the 2021 New Year's plan. The first quarter of next year, we are going to not meet back here in church, but we're going to start renting smaller venues outside of the temple. We're going to take our services into homes, into cafes, into gyms, into offices, into the public spheres around tables, all right? And we're going to be renting on the church budget. We're going to be renting smaller venues and we're going to have your cell groups combined and, and, and be dispatched in these um, several locations to watch our services. And in that way, I am very excited because we are empowering all of us in this whole sense of the ministry of the saints. Because I can't be there in all of the venues, neither can Pastor Rachel, we are not omnipresent. I can't be at JS, at a warmonger, at, at this home, at this office, at the same time. And so we are empowering you to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to move in your anointing that God has already assigned and given to you. And we're going to be raising up more service facilitators. And so it's going to be like mini services in different places and locations. Your cell leaders, your cell calls, they're going to be your pastors in those venues, all right? We're going to have, you know, altar calls. We're going to open up the floor in those places for you to respond. You can, you know, pray for one another, speak in tongues loudly, you know, and just minister to one another as the body of Christ. And I tell you what, it's harder to get people, non-believers, your friends and family members into a temple, a church building. But when we start taking the church out, let's, let's test this out. Let's test this out. You start inviting your friends. You start inviting your colleagues. You start inviting your bosses. You start inviting your family members and relatives. And come on, let's see souls saved. Amen. God can add daily. He added daily the number of souls that were saved when people broke bread from house to house. And so as we do this, it doesn't just stop on a Sunday morning. Please hear my heart. This is not just a Sunday morning concept. No, it's an everyday affair. Go out there, be with communities, and just spread the love and the compassion of Christ. Let it flow from the inside out. Amen. Gather around tables. And we've become templified and the Lord is just, right now, He's closing and it's like He's shutting down that, that strong eye that we have and He's strengthening the weaker eye so that our church, the church, can become a holistic church. A holistic church. The Word and the Spirit, the young and the old, it's evangelism and discipleship. It is the apostolic and the prophetic Come on, it is the five-fold ministry coming together. It, it is convergence that is happening as we step and transit into 2021. So he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let's close in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Reba haya romo steri anda rabo sha karaba morondo robo she baranda rabo sabaranda ramo shanta ramando robo shole vie talamando. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that there has been such a clarity that you have brought, Lord, to. To, to the vision of what you are bringing us into. I thank you, God, for that sharpening of vision, that clarity of vision, that truly this year has been a year of sharpening, a 2020 vision, that you have covered our strength so that you can strengthen the weaker eye. Because God, you want us to move in a holistic way. Your church is not just called to be an army, we're also called to be a family. Your church is not just called to be a temple of a weekly congregation, but we're also called to meet and gather at tables, God, on a daily communion, one to another, a community of fellow brothers and sisters. And, and by this, God, your word says, by this, by this, that we have love for one another, that we have compassion for one another, the world 
will know that we are your disciples indeed. It is not going to be through just the power of God. It is not just going to be through just the gifts of God. It is also going to be through the fruit of the Holy Spirit, our character, our exemplification of Christ. Where we get purified in the furnace of fire, reflecting the glory and the image of Christ that the world will know that we are your disciples indeed. And so, Lord, I pray that as we move forward into 2021, soon, Lord, I pray that, Lord, we will see a convergence that will happen, God, a convergence. God, a marriage of things in the church that have been segregated, that we have been, we had to, to choose either or. But, Lord, you've not called us to choose either or. You've called us to converge, God. A convergence that, 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 that is coming together. And so, Lord, I pray convergence, Lord, convergence. Let 2021 be a year of convergence where things have been separated God converge it God let them be married God let them be mar married Lord the word and the spirit and all these things God that we've talked about and you've shown us in and so Lord I thank you that you are strengthening our weaknesses in this time and even as Christmas is around the corner Lord I pray that Lord you will teach us God that you will show us how we can gather around tables and host tables with our colleagues and, and our, 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 our friends and our family members and just spread the love and exemplify the compassion of Christ in and through our lives. And so Lord, I pray, speak to us as only you can speak, God, in this area. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. We're going to go into Holy Communion at this time. Amen. I want to encourage you, gather around tables. And as you do that, let the love and the compassion of Christ just propel you. Amen. See the supernatural unleashed and released in such a real and powerful way in and through your lives. Amen. So let's come to the Lord's table this morning. prepare our hearts let's gather around the table and let's just come into communion thank you Father Lord I thank you for the bread and the cup thank you that you call us family thank you Lord that we can call you our Father Abba Abba Father thank you God that you call us your sons and your daughters they were not spiritual orphans, but we have been adopted into the kingdom of God, into the family of Christ. So Lord, I pray this day, teach us how to love like you love. Move us with compassion like you were moved with compassion, even unto death on the cross. And so we come before you this morning, and as we take these elements, bless it unto our bodies. And as we take this, Lord, I pray, will you move us? Will you saturate our hearts and our lives with the love of Christ from the inside out that we will be carriers of your glory? We will be carriers of your love and your compassion. That we will be moved in our bowels for the lost, for the broken, for the lesser. So as we take this, God, may our hearts burn for you. In Jesus' name, let's take of the bread together. Let's take up the cup together. Thank you, Lord. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His peace. And now I pray the blessings of God be upon you, abide in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sebi, for yet 
another refreshing and timely word. Mm. Before we go on, now, what announcements do we have? Now, if you're new with us or you have yet to follow us on any of our social media platforms, you can actually like, um, follow us or click share on our Instagram, Facebook and YouTube account. Yeah, that's so that you can be updated on any happenings in Cornerstone Boom. However, if you are not a social media person and notifications are not your thing, you can check okay. out our website at www.mywcscc.com Giving our tithes and offerings is also part of our worship unto Him. So as the Lord has generously blessed and provided for us, let us be faithful and give unto Him with a cheerful heart. Okay? Yes, so now since we're meeting online, um, in replacement of our offering buckets, offering bags, we're using the QR code below. So scan them and it will direct you to our bank account details. Mm. If you're new to us and you, if you would like to know more about Christianity, prayer or, or counselling, you may reach out to us on the QR code below and our Cornerstone Borneo staff will definitely get in touch with you. You know Elvina, how the months has been in 2020 for me mm -hmm. is January, February, lockdown, quarantine, lockdown and then now we are in December. December. Well, the good news is, Christmas is just around the corner. Yes, and we will be having our online Christmas service on 25th of December at 10 a.m. Yes, for those residing in Miri, you will be meeting in various locations. So, we're going to give you more information later in your cell group chats. So, stay tuned. As for those in Kuching, you are blessed because um, the church space is big enough to cater for everyone in compliance to the SLP, so you will be meeting in church instead. Spilling the beans, we do have gift packs prepared for each and every one of you. You don't want to miss out on this. Ding ding ding! Because cool merchandise has been prepared for everyone. So we look forward to see all of you on the Christmas service. Yes, so I think that's all we have for today. Yep, have a blessed week ahead and see you on Christmas Day. Bye! Bye.